G'day guys, I'm really happy to say this is my first sponsored video. Uh, the good people at Banggood have sent me one of these rainbow wings. Let's check it out. Alright, well there it is, the rainbow flying wing. This is version 2 and it is the tail pusher version. Here's all the parts and pieces. We've got a prop, some carbon, heat shrink, uh, we've got a couple of Z-Bends which will go on the end of the carbon and some fittings for the ailerons or alevons. We've got a motor mount piece which is a laser cut and painted black. Nice manual, colour, pretty straightforward. This does look like the colour scheme from the original. Instructions on how to create the push rods how to mount in the wings and put it all together and I'm going to do a really quick uh, version of uh, assembly here just so you can see what it looks like here's a nice touch the version 2 is pre-fitted carbon through the full length. I'm just going to use uh, hot glue to make the join and then afterwards there's three carbon flats that go uh, one in the top and two in the bottom into the two slots that are provided. Make sure I fill that all up with glue. Get it nice and deep in there. Third carbon on top. Make sure you do it on the one on the front, not the one on the back. You're going to need to run the servo wires on the back. With the two wing halves assembled, I'm going to pop out all the pieces here on the motor mount. And they should just pop out pretty easily. One thing to note is the motor mount here has three holes pre-drilled, uh, which is probably ideal if you have one of the uh, standoff type motors that uh, allows you to slot it in. But we might have to do a little bit of modification to get my 1806 on there. That comes with uh, four holes in the back. So I'm using one of the existing holes in the motor mount. And I've drilled another small hole just in a corresponding corner. And then I've added the two screws in with some blue Loctite. I'm using a medium gap fill CA just to add that uh, motor mount on. And I did need to just clean up some of the rough edges from the laser just to get that into a snug fit. I just ran the hobby knife over that important to make sure that you've got these the right way so the long tabs going into the plane at the bottom and one of the other things I've needed to do is because I have this motor mounted straight onto the back I have had to smooth out the back edge so that when I add that in that uh, stays away from the bottom of the motor so before I mount the motor mount onto the plane I'm just test fitting uh, the components here under the back, see if I can stick those in to keep it a neat fit so that when that's mounted on top of the plane everything's tucked away and protected. 
I did forget to add the skid as I was gluing the two halves together, which might have made it a bit easier. Now that I've got uh, the hot glue of hard, I might have to just poke some holes to, to bury that in there. But I will add it uh, to come with the kit, so let's see what it looks like. Uh, recommended servos are 6 gram servos. I'm running the Tower Pro MG90's 9 gram servos. Uh, so when you try and get that into the factory slot, it sits up. So we'll need to cut out the bottom of the hole and let the servo seep down in there a bit neater. So with the bottom cut out, you can pop that servo straight in. And there's a nice flush finish on the bottom. Even though the servo is a really nice tight fit in the hole, I am going to peel the stickers off, uh, rough up that surface just a little bit, and then add a dab of hot glue just to be sure it gets uh, it stays in there. You can always get off hot glue in the emergency that I need to change the servo. But these uh, these metal gears are very good. Just a little dob on each side. So I'm going to add the control horn into the pre-made pre hole. Uh, which means that it's going to be driving the control surface from one end. And with all EPP, this hinge is fairly tight. Um, so that we get a full movement of the whole surface, we can do a couple of things. We can either stick in a run of carbon, which isn't supplied, but you can get that pretty much uh, anywhere. We can work the surface. Or, very, very carefully, free up that hinge. By just running a knife across, not all the way through, just across, just to release. Just give it a bit of relief on that hinge. And we're getting a lot more action. So in the kit you get a set of four Z-bends that we need to glue on the end of some carbon uh, push rods. Now the carbon push rods is a very good idea. I've never used this setup before and the actual horns that go on the surfaces are a ratchet type, although I would probably use, I'm going to use some of more of the medium CA just to be sure that that's going to stay in there. So the carbon push rods here are a little generous, so they're a bit longer than required. So what we'll do is I'll put one Z bend on one end and then trim up the other end so we don't have too much excess. I think here's where uh, epoxy glue or CA glue, I think you definitely wouldn't use anything like uh, hot glue. The CA is good because it goes off quick. The other good thing that's included here is uh, is the heat shrink. So we'll cut a part of that off and heat shrink that on just to give it some extra physical support. 
We've got the servo ends of both the push rods in. I'm just uh, getting ready to trim up the length here. So I'm going to feed the Z bend through, but the hole there is just a little bit too small. So I'm just going to run the hobby knife just, just to open that up just a, just a small amount. And I'm going to run that on the outermost hole. And so I'm going to line that up. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but if we can... Uh, I'll just mark that with my thumb there. So with that cut to length, I'm just going to slip the heat shrink over there ready. Pop that back into the servo horn. And just line that back up. With so this is the critical part now, is you want to have just a little bit of reflex on that elevator, as with all wings. You can always trim with endpoints later, but it's good if we can get it pretty close to start with. I'll let that glue set. Just a little bit of reflex in there before I hit that with some heat. So after dry fitting the motor mount, I've had a bit of a rethink with the battery on the front uh, and the wire coming through. Uh, I just figured any frontal impact would likely chop the wires up against the wood. So rather than do that, uh, I figured that I would run, run that wiring on the outside and then also the uh, receiver uh, might be better also out on the outside. Um, just to have access and set file safe and things like that uh, and then makes it easier just to connect that up it's going to run a bead of hot glue down the end for the winglets making sure that that is Right on the front and flat on the bottom of the wing. With, <coughs> with everything else in place, I guess it's time to glue down the motor mount. So that's just sitting in there. And on the tabs. Do an all up weight with the finished product. And it sits uh, about 204 grams, although I will have to add a little bit of extra nose weight just to set out the CG. I'm going to do a rough thrust test. We had 204 grams of weight with the assembled plane. If I reset that to zero, and try and balance that up there. without affecting that too much. And then run that up. I think about 170 grams of thrust. So not quite one to one, but should, uh, should move along all right with the 5.3 prop. Swapped over to a 5.5 prop now. This one was uh, off my 
another plane so it's a little bit beat up but for testing purposes let's have a look At 200 grams of thrust so we might leave that one on the 5.5 five rather than the 5.3 and uh, see how that one runs I think it's come up very neat I was a bit unsure about the push rods at first but uh, I think they'll do a good job don't know if that'd be my first choice if I was going to be building it again I like the speed clamps and this is a light, a very light uh, setup though. So let's see how it goes on the Maiden.